Today is the day that I get my coil taken out. <laughs> I was so horny. There was dried blood on the crotch. Yay! Hello, welcome to my channel. We are back and I am starting off the year with a new slash old series. That is right, I am bringing back the Hormone Diaries. If you're new here, hi, my name is Hannah and this channel is all about sex and relationships and our bodies and in 2016 I started this series called The Hormone Diaries where I documented my journey coming off the pill and all of the changes to my body, the return of my period after its seven year absence. That series kind of phased out after I then got the coil and my periods stopped again but it also became a book. I wrote a book called The Hormone Diaries, The Bloody Truth About a Period which is all about contraception and periods and all of that stuff. But now I'm relaunching the Hormone Diaries series because exciting, daunting, terrifying, vulnerable news, my partner and I are trying to get pregnant and have a baby and I wanted to document that process. I say vulnerable news because this is not a pregnancy announcement video. I am currently not pregnant even though I would quite like to be. This first episode is from the beginning of this journey in July 2020 when I got my coil taken out and even though I'm not pregnant right now there are a few reasons why I wanted to start sharing this series with you now. One, I'm impatient and didn't want to keep sitting on this footage. Ah, that's the truth of it. Number two, the new year felt like a great time to start a new series, a new project. Three, probably the most important reason, I wanted to show the messy side of this whole fertility thing in semi real time. There's one couple that I watch on YouTube who mostly make personal finance content but they've also been really open about their fertility and IVF journey and from watching their videos I personally felt like I wanted to also share my own journey without knowing what the result is because that's what it's actually like experiencing it. You don't know what's going to happen. And four, I don't like keeping secrets. I've been open with friends and family and even colleagues where necessary about the fact that I'm trying to get pregnant and I personally have found those relationships easier to navigate because we're all working with the same information. There's still a few small subtle things that aren't great and maybe I'll make a video about things not to say to somebody who's trying to get pregnant but for the most part I personally think that I would find it more difficult people not knowing. I see the openness as a form of emotional protection. Maybe I'm naive about that, we shall see. All that being said, if I do get pregnant, I will talk about it publicly when I'm ready to. Please do not speculate in the comments of YouTube videos or Instagram photos. We've been trying for a while now and I may not be able to get pregnant, but if I am, I will tell you in my own time. But in the meantime, I wanted to share with you the journey, the process, because this is something that a lot of people go through and we don't often hear these stories without knowing if it's going to be a happy ending. So. Let's start at the beginning. Hey, good morning. This is strange. I feel like I'm going back in time documenting what I'm doing with my body and my contraception. So today is the day that I get my coil taken out. Now the coil that I have is the Marina coil. It's the hormonal one and it lasts five years. I'm getting mine taken out a bit early because guess what? I wanna have a baby. Not just me, my partner Dan also wants one, so I guess that works out quite well, doesn't it? We're not immediately going to start trying because we are getting married in a couple of months and maybe honeymoon, we shall see. I'm currently recording this on the 2nd of July, 2020. So everything is still very coronavirus, even though we're kind of easing out of lockdown now, but the virus is very much still around. So we don't want to start trying yet because I don't want to be pregnant, getting married, and if we do get to go on our honeymoon, I do not want to be pregnant during that either because I would like to drink alcohol. That's the main reason. Is that a shallow reason? Also, I'm getting a dress made for my wedding, and so if my body changes, uh, that would be very inconvenient. But the reason why I'm getting the coil out now, like two, three months, 
before we even want to start trying is because the last time I came off contraception where I didn't have a period and it's the same this time around on this coil I haven't had a period it took six weeks for my period to come back and then that year that I was having periods my cycle was so long so irregular I don't actually know what's going on there I think if the same thing happens this time round, where, where I just have like 45 to 60 <laughs> day cycles, I would probably go to the doctor about it and just be like, is there something going on? Like, why is my cycle so long and irregular? Because if you're trying to have a baby, that might be something that you want to investigate. So yeah, I'm basically giving my body a bit of a head start to get back into a routine. I'm going to start tracking my period again. I'm gonna start tracking my cycle again i still have my thermometer for the natural cycles app and i'm undecided about if i want to go that route so yeah my appointment is this morning normally the way that they do it is when you go in you have a consultation about what you're in for um but because of covid we did the consultation over the phone and i learned some things that i would like to tell you about so first of all, she was like, no sex. <laughs> no sex for a week before you get it taken out. Or at least no sex that could get you pregnant. And the reason for that is because sperm can survive up inside the womb for up to a week, which means if you have sex on one day and then like a week later you ovulate, you could get pregnant because some of that sperm might still be alive and ready and waiting for the egg to appear. Like, Dan and I haven't used condoms in about three years. <laughs> Luckily, we still have some condoms. I checked the expiry date. It's all fine. That's a new routine. Well, an old routine that we now have to like come back to. And then the other thing that they did on the phone consultation was just ask about any medication that I'm on, medical history. I had to tell them about my stoma and stuff. And then they also asked if I was being abused, forced or coerced in any way. And the answer to that is no, but I think it's pretty good protocol that that's something that they ask. I've heard that getting it taken out is a lot less painful than getting it put in. They still use a speculum and apparently they make you cough. Now, obviously with COVID, <laughs> maybe they'll just like make me wear a mask and then like cough also just protect it all so the cough doesn't go everywhere. Or maybe they won't make me cough and try and like get it out another way, make me go like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the situation will be. I'll let you know. Let's go! Also, yes, of course I have a yellow face mask. I'm back. The whole thing took less than 20 minutes. It was great. Was it great? I'm in a bit of discomfort right now. So because of COVID, the clinic was just so empty. I have never seen a sexual health clinic so empty. I had to give them a call beforehand and wait outside and they would kind of like let people in one at a time. I then filled out a little form and I noticed and really liked that they had on there gender, is this the same as the sex that you were assigned at birth, and then a little tick box for non-binary. Fantastic. And then I got my coil removed. You know, the usual lying on the bed, legs like this. <laughs> lube, speculum, although they don't call it lube, they call it gel. All of that. And then yeah, she did make me cough. Take a breath in and then cough. I think she grabbed the strings of the coil with scissors. It's difficult to know exactly what is going on because of your positioning, but I saw her grab a pair of scissors, but I didn't see her do anything with them. But like, I'm like, did scissors inside the speculum, grab the string that you can see and then <gasps> yank. On a level of pain, and discomfort, I would say it's slightly more uncomfortable than a smear test. Because instead of just scraping the cervix, something is being like pulled through it. I don't want to say nowhere near as painful as insertion, because for me, I got a numbing injection. So I did not feel the insertion at all. 
So if anything, this was more painful because I actually felt it. However, post insertion, my body just was like, nope. And I had such bad cramps for hours. I thought I was going to vomit. It was the worst pain. Oh, it was horrible. So I'm not expecting to be in that kind of pain now. I would say right now I've got like dull period cramps. I'm feeling quite tired, <laughs> to be honest. I'm like, I need to nap. And then the other thing was, is that she was like, do you have a pad with you? And I was like, oh no. So she gave me a panty liner as well because I might spot a little bit. And that actually reminded me, I need to take stock of what period products I've got in the house. I have a menstrual cup somewhere, need to locate that and give it a clean. I've got two pairs of period underwear. However, they're both low rise and with my stoma and everything, I now prefer to wear high-waisted underwear. So that's not ideal. I might have to get myself some new period pants. And then I think I've got some pads and tampons as well, which considering I already have them, I might as well make my way through them and then figure out alternatives. One thing I'm really not looking forward to in terms of having no contraception is my boobs. So with the lower amount of hormones in the marina coil, I still felt my cycle, even though I didn't have a period, I still felt when my boobs were like heavy and achy and sore, but it was nowhere near as painful as it was without contraception. So that's one thing I'm really not looking forward to. But because my cycle is usually so long, I don't have to deal with it that often. But when I do deal with it, when I used to have a proper cycle, it was like two weeks, two solid weeks of horrible tit pain. So we'll see how long I have to deal with that for and hopefully just get pregnant. Oh my God, I forgot to tell you the main thing, the most exciting thing. I asked the nurse who did my procedure if I could keep my coil and she was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, can you see it? This has been inside my womb for the last two and a half years. This is my coil. It's a bit manky from being inside my uterus. What do I do with this now? <laughs> there was definitely some vagina gunk on that but it's fine it's all my body it's all my body let's just put it but yeah look so that's how big the marina coil is that's something that we can that we can take away from this and this is the string what a time there it is hello so it's a few days later after i got the coil taken out and a few things have happened. So on the first couple of days, like no spotting, no bleeding, even though she said that that was a common thing that could happen, but it didn't happen to me until Saturday. Oh, also worth mentioning that those cramps that I was feeling, they lasted maximum an hour and then nothing. So yes, Saturday, I got a kind of period i was very confused um but it was blood it was clotty mm, you know you love it when it's clotty but yeah so i got my period luckily i have lots of pads and tampons and stuff in the house so i was using them on saturday and then i cleaned my menstrual cup so it was ready for me to use i wore some period underwear overnight yeah so saturday there was like a fair amount of blood and then like I don't know about overnight because I think if there was anything it just got absorbed into the period underwear I don't know so then on Sunday I had a tampon in for some of the day and there was still stuff on it but barely anything and then yesterday which was Monday I wore my menstrual cup in which was lots of fun although my nails were very long and then I had to uh file them down because owie you do not want to be inserting and taking out a menstrual cup when you've got long scratchy nails not fun but yeah i kept the menstrual cup in for like most of the day and there was only like a small amount of blood in there and it was very brown so like on the saturday it was like red clotty clumpy and then yesterday 
it was like liquidy and brown. So I don't know. I've got like a panty liner in right now. I'm not expecting, I'm not expecting much. And I've started using Clue again to like track everything that's happening. And I've put it down as spotting, but I'm like, do I put it down as a period? I don't know. But yeah, that's what's happening. That's the update. Genuinely was so shocked when I saw it on Saturday because last time it took six weeks for a period to come back for me to bleed again. And this time it was just like two days later, there it is. Although I highly doubt it's a period. I think it's just probably my uterine lining that has just been hanging out inside me this entire time. And then suddenly it's like, we're free. Um, and maybe that's why it's a bit clotty and brown because it's been hanging out up there for a while. I don't know. I don't know. I'm wearing pads and tampons and menstrual cups again and period under. Wow. In just the space of like four days, I got through pads, tampons, a menstrual cup and period underwear. Wow. We're really, we're really going for it. There's your update. So there's a couple updates really. One, remember when I got that semi-period that probably wasn't a period, it was just me bleeding after having the coil taken out. Well, I was wearing my new yellow Lucy and Yak baggy trousers and I just pulled them out to wear them again. And I spotted that there was dry blood on the crotch. Yay! So I just must not have spotted that last time. And now it is just now soaking in some cold water with salt. I don't know if this will still work because obviously the blood is like dry and old now. But I'm just gonna do this and see what happens and then if nothing happens, just stick it in the wash and hope for the best. The second update is that I noticed after getting my coil taken out that I was so horny, like so horny, like all different levels than what I've been used to post my surgery, basically. I always assumed that my like lower libido was because I'd gone through some physical and medical trauma and my body was just like, I'm gonna call it. But obviously I got my coil put in like a couple of months before all of that happened. So I don't know, although it has kind of died down now. So I'm kind of interested to start like monitoring when I'm mega horny and then when it just feels a bit more normal. And when I say normal, I mean normal for me. Cause I think the important thing is all about knowing what your own normal is and then being able to spot variations from that so there you go bloody trousers and mega horn that's what's happened so far where have you gone let's just ignore all of the mess behind me but they clean we got rid of the blood stain the cold water didn't fully do it, so I had to put it through the wash. But I checked, I <laughs> can't seem to find the blood stains anymore, so hopefully we're good. Did you hear my hip click just then? That was bad. <laughs> yeah! I feel like this was a rite of passage for taking my coil out, just getting blood stained clothes, so. Great start. So last night I got my usual boob pain start again. Let me just check how many days slash weeks it's been since I got the coil taken out. Basically when I did have a period and my full cycle, my boobs would hurt for like two weeks before my period started. It was like pretty accurate. Like my tits would start hurting two weeks later, period. And then since being on the coil, I had that but just less so my boobs hurt less and they would only hurt for maybe like one week before it would disappear because I didn't have periods but it would be like the boob pain would disappear and then I would get some cramping but no period and so I would mark that as a period even though it wasn't a period. Here's a thing that I wish period apps would do is allow you to mark a cycle without saying that you're bleeding because there are other indicators that we know about in our body that indicate us like starting a new cycle that isn't just bleeding so i would just always like put in a day of bleeding even though i didn't bleed just so that the app would reset so the boobs started hurting yesterday let's add that in the tender breasts okay so that was day 42 
of my cycle and I got my coil taken out on day 16. There you go, 26 days. The boobs are hurting. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be a week or two weeks. I don't even know if I will even have a period at the end of this. And by this, I mean the boobs hurting, but we shall see, we shall see. Also, you know how in that last clip I talked about being really horny? Not horny at all anymore, like, what? <laughs> it's like, but maybe that's just like a natural ebb and flow in my libido, but also I'm, I'm just being very particular about like, tuning in with like all of these different things because I was so horny. Like, just could not stop thinking about sex and wanting sex and now I'm just like eh could do without so I don't know what all that is about but oh my days so I went about my entire day yesterday and it was fine and then it was like when I was getting ready for bed in the evening and they're taking the bra off and it was just like ooh, and I had to kind of like hold them up because the weight of them it hurt so much but yeah I really hope that I don't have this for two weeks be I'm gonna stop fondling my boobs now. Guess what? I got my period. Yeah, it happened already. Genuinely wasn't expecting it to come this soon. So if we do the maths, basically um, my boobs started hurting six days before I came on my period. Um, and my boobs still hurt yesterday, which is when I started my period. But I'm just checking them now and I'm like, no, it's gone. It's gone. They're better. So yeah, we were actually away and staying with some friends. Um, and I woke up yesterday morning and I just like had really bad cramps. And I was just like, why am I cramping? Like what's going on? Like my boobs still hurt. Uh. Um, and then I looked down and um, luckily didn't get any blood on our friends' bed sheets, but did get it all over my thighs. Just all down my inner thighs and had to borrow a tampon. Although not borrow, cause I'm obviously not giving it back. But then by the time we got home yesterday, I have just been using my menstrual cup. Does this happen to other people? When you first come on your period and then like you wipe the blood away and then you use whatever menstrual product you're using, right? I like did one wipe, but clearly there was a lot more blood and I just, didn't wipe it all away before inserting the tampon. So inserting that tampon and then trying to like wrap the applicator back up was just a bloody mess. I was like, oh, of course, like the first time I get my period in ages, <laughs> I just end up with blood like all over my hands. But yeah, the cramps were pretty bad yesterday. And also my mood was really bad yesterday. Hence why I'm filming this now. I thought about filming yesterday to be like, oh, I came on my period, but I was just like, fuck this, fuck this. I was just miserable. I was in pain. I wasn't having a good time and my boobs still hurt. So it was just like all of the symptoms at once. Yay. But now we're just rolling with the punches. Now we're fine. We're on day two. Yeah. So six days after my boobs started hurting, got my period and four and a half weeks after getting the coil taken out. So there we go. Shorter than last time but that was on the pill and so I don't know if it's different because when you're taking contraceptive orally then it's like throughout your entire bloodstream in order to get to your uterus whereas before the hormones were like localized in my uterus so maybe that's why it took less time for things to revert back who knows but yeah I'm a bleeder again I'm on my period. This morning, Dan asked me how the curse was. And I was like, are you talking about my period? Didn't appreciate it. Did not appreciate that at all. But yeah, here we go. Got my period. This is what we wanted. We wanted to get the body back to normal so then we can start the baby making. So there we have it. At least I'm not pregnant right now because that would have thrown off all my plans. Obviously you can't plan for this shit, but still I got my period and I was like, Dan, guess what? not pregnant. <laughs> we'll see when the horn comes back. So I'm interested to see if like in my next cycle, I like find myself being really horny for like a specific period of it. We shall see. Lots of adventures to come. Lots to come. And that doesn't bring us to today because I've got a lot more footage from the end of last year, tracking my cycle, tracking my ovulation for the first time, lots of negative pregnancy tests, 
Oh boy. And lots of sore boobs. Lots of sore boobs. The sore boobs is just a feature. A few updates from this video though. I cleaned my coil. I cleaned it. I'm a little bit disgusted in myself, but I'm also like, don't care. The mega horn did not come back. It was really prominent for that first cycle after I got the coil taken out, but every cycle since it's just been like back to my normal levels. I hope that you're excited for this series. I don't know how often I'll do updates, but I also want to do other videos around this topic, like fertility, baby making sex, dealing with the possibility that we might not be able to get pregnant. So fire away any video suggestions you have or questions in the comments below. Also, if you didn't know, when the Hormone Diaries book came out, I created a community Facebook group for people to talk about all of these topics, periods, contraception, hormones, fertility, all of that. I'll leave a link to that in the description and if anyone else watching is also on a fertility journey, that might be a good place to connect and share with others. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all. I hope that you're well. Here's to 2021. Let's see what it brings. <laughs>